I, I was from the flood prone community and um, it was very difficult for us to go to school at the time and I, I found many of my friends and relatives were denied access to education. It was very difficult for me to accept the situation. I thought if the children cannot go to school, then the school should go to them. That was the beginning of uh, the idea of floating community. It took me four years to raise the funds to build the first floating school. And then gradually we introduced other activities. It, it was not easy at the beginning. Um, I, I had uh, limited resources at the time, only 500 US dollars from my own savings and scholarships and an old computer. And um, we, we needed to work hard to, uh, to raise some money to build the first floating school. So it took me four years to get uh, some money to build the first floating school. Then uh, in, in the year 2003, um, one uh, organization from the US, Global Fund for Children, they came to see the project. And they found it, the impact and the relationship between the people and the river and the project. And uh, that was the beginning of a um, good thing happening to the project. Later we got support from Leva Strauss Foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and uh, also recognition from UN, United Nations, helped us a lot with the, uh, with the project, uh, project's growth and scale. Uh, our, uh, we, uh, we have uh, different components within our projects. We have floating schools that provide education up to grade four, we have floating libraries that is providing um, um, uh, information and book services to the isolated uh, riverside community, particularly when the monsoon comes, these areas get uh, isolated. We have floating training centers that provide uh, uh, training to the parents and farmers on sustainable farming and new flood adaptation techniques, uh, for example, flood raised in crops. Uh, we have healthcare boats uh, and uh, solar workshops that we where we teach the rural women on manufacturing solar lanterns. So we have different types of projects bringing different services to the rural communities. We, we have 54 boats in operation uh, that includes floating library, floating training center, healthcare, solar workshops, and another uh, 55 boats we use during the disaster period, particularly when the floods come the monsoon season. It took us uh, four, uh, four months to design the first one. Uh, though, so the first, uh, it was at the beginning, it was only one board, then gradually the number of boards increased. Okay. We, we have our own uh, monitoring and evaluation department, and we have some indicators, and we, uh, have, we do conduct surveys at the beginning and end of each year. So uh, we, we, uh, we try to follow uh, the school enrollment and dropout ratio, and then um, increase in the income because um, uh, some of our projects uh, also address work with the landless families, extreme poor families. So we we see if they are coming out of poverty or if they are graduating from or how many of them are graduating from floating schools and how many of them are going to secondary schools and completing uh, uh, grade ten. So we. Uh, always conduct uh, the evaluations and, and uh, university teachers, they are involved with the evaluation process. We have um, uh, 1,600 students starting on the floating schools and then we have 19,000 users on our floating libraries and uh, another 35,000 people are using uh, floating training centers and uh, over um, 15,000 people are using the floating health clinics. So altogether we are reaching uh, close to 97,000 people a year. The project uh, being already replicated by other organizations uh, within the Bangladesh. We help them to understand our designs. Um, we facilitated the project site visits uh, and we are attended the meetings so they can actually uh, implement uh, the projects in other settings. So. There are organizations, they started um, replicating the projects, including the international organizations, CARE International, uh, UNICEF, uh, BRAC. So uh, they, they are actually um, replicating the projects in Bangladesh. And the similar model uh, already being replicated in, uh, in Africa. So that, uh, it has been um, taken by the people because the need is there, because of the climate change 
that there will be more flooding. So people understand that this is the right time to you know, uh, start with the project to uh, build a relationship with the community so that they can actually scale up the project. In, in Bangladesh and our, our countries, developing countries like Bangladesh, uh, it is always uh, difficult um, to provide, uh, to create access in the hard to reach areas, uh, where um, the communication is depend on uh, on the boats or uh, all the in, in the hill tracks areas. So, uh, it is important that we should ensure um, schooling or proper education and basic services in the hard to reach areas and with quality of education and improve the quality of teaching. That actually will help us to uh, improve the overall uh, education situation in, a, in any developing country. Uh, it is actually a wonderful opportunity to be here. Um, uh, I, I met a lot of people here and uh, I was uh, privileged to be uh, to share my, uh, my work, our work and our, um, uh, um, uh, our challenges. Uh, uh, the situation in Bangladesh and future challenges. So uh, I, I do hope that people will, it will provide an encouragement to them to, um, to um, tr work with new innovative ideas in their own fields. Yeah, it, the conference is very well organized um, and uh, I, I, I was actually uh, very glad to see the participation a lot of people are participating uh, in different parts. They are coming from different parts of the world. That is actually um, the spirit of, uh, you know, uh, that should be the spirit of any conference to share the learning with uh, people coming from all around the world.